commercial flights, though, or long-distance relationships seem to be a problem of the past. Well, with me to discuss these questions is uh, uh, Paul Bruce. He's an aerodynamics expert at Imperial College here in London. And uh, uh, Paul, um, the question is how close we are to this technology being put into a, an aircraft as we know it. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, for an aircraft as we know it, so carrying passengers long distances at high speed, uh, I think uh, we're definitely still taking baby steps. So I think I think decades rather than rather than years. When we talk about Mac, Mac five or Mac six, uh, uh, how easy is it for a person to travel at that speed? Uh, certainly, we can cope with it. Um, so any any aircraft would be, I think the aim would would be to bring it into the sort of realm of, of what we're used to traveling already. So you get on a plane in a pressurized cabin, uh, take off from a runway, and accelerate for a lot longer. But it, it, not necessarily the same sort of levels of uh, physical endurance as an astronaut. Say. And in terms of aerodynamics, what are the big challenges there? What has this aircraft got to withstand? So when we start talking about traveling at a hypersonic speed, so five or six times the speed of sound, or getting on for that, as this, as this aircraft is designed for, uh, the big challenges are heat management and mm. propulsion. So uh, we understand the flow physics fairly well. Um, that's leaving a lot of a lot of room for manoeuvre, I think. Um, but, uh, but the materials involved. But the materials, are a challenge. The materials are a big challenge, and propulsion is a huge challenge. So actually, generating power at very high speed is quite hard. And what sort of materials will be able to withstand the pressure? Uh, very advanced uh, alloys, uh, carbon sort of composites and ceramics are sort of the things that people are, uh, are, are considering using. And are they there yet? I think technologically, yes. Uh, the, the question is, is moving away from science and towards the engineering and making it happen. And in terms of propulsion, what's the challenge there then? Well, propulsion is, we're very used to uh, generating thrust and, and power at quite low speeds and, and we understand how to do that uh, and it's quite easy. But when we start going faster and faster, uh, there's a lot of kinetic energy involved, and if you try and uh, apply some forces, uh, combust some uh, some fuel, and, and generate thrust at very high speed, the temperatures involved can be can be extremely high. So, moving mechanical components um, like a, a turbine or a compressor in a normal engine are just just out the window. And just explain what's different about a jet engine from the sort of engine that we're talking about here. What is the technological difference? So jet engines work very well, uh, are designed to work quite well at fairly low speed. So the air coming in the front uh, doesn't have a lot of kinetic energy. And so you, you compress it, um, put some fuel in, you burn it, and as all the energy is released, that comes out as a, as a relatively fast exhaust. Uh, that's a sort of conventional jet or turbo, turbo jet or turbo fan. When we start talking about the speed Mach 5, Mach 6, like the wave rider we're talking about, uh, we need, need something called a scramjet, which is a supersonic combustion uh, ramjet. So rather than using moving mechanical parts to speed up to compress the flow, uh, we, we instead we use the kinetic energy that the air has. So if you're traveling at Mach 5, uh, the air that's coming in the front is going so fast that just by slowing it down, the pressure and temperature go up to high enough and, and the numbers you need to to burn fuel in there. It's clear that uh, you know, this is uh, a possibility in the future, isn't it now? People are looking at this as a possibility. So, I mean, realistically, when might we be traveling in an aircraft like this? So, as, as we've said, the, the, the sort of the, the starting point here is, is really the, the military driven. So NASA and the US Air Force are, are really probably the world leaders in this. Uh, and the development costs of these aircraft mean that it's going to be a long time before the technology filters through. Um, Years? I think, I think, decades? I think decades. I think we've got to say, I'd, I'd like to say definitely within our lifetime. Are we going to uh, see it? No, we are going to see it. Yeah, I think we're going to see it. Uh, I think the scale of it, I think, think something along the lines of Concord. Uh, I think if the market's there, I think the technology will, will appear. Paul, uh, Bruce, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Imperial.